Welcome back to How to RV. I am Jason, and today I want to talk about that annoying thing of backing up your camper and not being able to see where you're going. Now, I know a lot of you out there know what I'm talking about. If you don't have somebody there to help you back up, then not having somebody back there to help you can be a little frustrating. So today I wanna to share with you a product that you can use on yours to help you with that very situation. And with that being said, Halo View reached out to me and asked me if I wanted to review one of their cameras so that it can cover this topic for you guys out there. Now, a lot of the videos that you watch talking about these kind of things go through an unboxing, but today we're not gonna do that. We're gonna jump into three main things that I would wanna know about when it comes to backup cameras. The first thing that I would wanna know about is the clarity and the monitor and what you view, right? So can you see the image? Is everything easy to look at? What do you see in the monitor when it's nighttime outside? Does it give you markers so that when you're backing up, you can tell how close you are to something? All those things has to do with visibility. What can you see and how clear is the image? The next thing that I would wanna know about is the ease of install. How easy is it to get it installed? Am I gonna to have to cut holes in my RV? Am I gonna be able to just plug and play? Am I gonna to have to worry about water damage because of leaks? All those kind of things. And then of course, the last thing is price, right? You don't wanna go out and spend thousand dollars on something that's just not gonna work for you. So it's good to kind of have somebody to review something like this for you, as well as how much money are you gonna spend? Now you can go to Halo View's website and if you look down below, you'll see a link where you can get to that. You will see at the moment of this recording that it's around $339. And for $339, you get a rear view camera and you get the monitor and all the little stuff that comes together in order to get it connected and mounted inside of your vehicle. But before you go off the deep end saying that $339 is way too much for a camera, I do want to share that most campers these days do come with the Furion prepped backup camera. That means that there's a little box on the back side of your RV. You just take that off, you plug in a Furion camera and you're ready to go. But, and there's always a but, that that one is about 200 to $250 more than this camera. And there's a few things that this one can do that Furion cannot. And that is this little slot here. It is for an SD card, meaning that you can record everything that's going on with your camera while you're going down a road. And the Furion backup cameras cannot do that. So I'm gonna go outside and start getting this thing installed. And while I'm doing that, I'll talk about what came in the box. So in the box, naturally, it came with the monitor itself and it came with the backup camera, which we're installing on the back side of the RV. It also came with the sun shield that goes with the monitor to keep the sun glare off the front of the screen. It also came with this mounting bracket so you can screw it down inside of your car if you want to and then you mount with these little holes right here on the side. Also inside the box was three different antennas. One is for the camera and then two for the monitor itself so that it can talk to each other. Also another type of car mount so that you can put this inside of your car and hook your monitor to it and have it set somewhere. An assorted amount of different cables so that you can get everything plugged up and connected so that it was up and running. And then an assorted bag of screws and whatnot so that you can get everything connected and screwed together and held down nice and tightly. And then as we were talking about earlier, being able to have the camera mounted so that it doesn't leak on your RV, they send you a seal that goes onto the back of the camera and then you mount that to your RV so that nothing leaks. And then if you're anything like me and you need any kind of manuals or diagrams or anything like that to help you get everything connected and up and running, well, here you go. The manuals came with it also. Now that I have it installed, here is the video or how the picture looks on the screen screen itself looking out of the camera the back of the RV. And yes, I am recording this at my home off the back of my RV, so please don't judge me for what I've got behind the RV. You could say it's lived in. Also with the clarity of the actual screen itself, here is me walking across the backyard or coming in behind the RV, walking to my fence line and then walking back up to the RV. There is one thing that I like to note about the screen and that is that there are a bunch of buttons and a bunch of things that you can change on it and we'll get into that in another video. I wanted to tell you that because in a future video there is a quirk in the system and I want to be able to explain what that is in case you decide to mount this inside of yours and you run into this problem yourself. Also coming up we'll do a drive test to see how this camera looks going down the road and what things look like behind it. And as usual we'll get into user comments. The first comment came from Benny McDonald 8152 saying what is sad is you had to do all that to a new travel trailer. Now this came off the video about the repair that I had to do on mine right after I got it. And yes, I had to do a bunch of repairs, but nevertheless, from what I hear from other RVers out there, there is always something that you need to work on, whether it's new or not. 
it just that's the way of RV life. It just comes with opportunities of things to work on and clean up. Now this next comment came from Rose Originals saying, we do shut off the water if we're going to be gone for any length of time, but I didn't think about switching off the water heater. Thanks for the tip, new subby here. Now this came from the video talking about the water pressure regulator. And in that video, we were talking about what you should do when you leave your RV. And my suggestion in the video was to turn the water off if you're gonna leave for any lengthy amount of time. And the part of the video which Rose was talking about was talking about turning off the water heater. You could burn up the heating element inside of your water heater. So with that, if you're going to leave, turn off the water, turn off the water heater. And when you get back, turn everything back on, you'll be good to go. And this last comment came from RV Mom Tube saying, I would like to thank you for explaining this so simply. I am a relatively new RV salesperson who knew nothing. And for some reason, this subject was not clicking for me. The wheel was turning, but the hamster was dead. This just made my life a whole lot easier Thank you. Now this comment came from the video talking about how the gas electric water heater in your RV works. And I would like to thank you for sending that comment. That makes me feel good that I actually did something. And I am so glad that it was helpful to you. And I hope that as you get into more of your RV sales, that it's helpful for others out there as well. And as you're selling a bunch of RVs, if you tell them about my channel, I would greatly appreciate it. Well, that's it for the day. So thank you for joining in. Enjoy your RV travels. Enjoy your backup cameras and God bless.